Yet another welfare program, huh? That'll fix the problem. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about 650 black women in Georgia who are going to get $850 per month in universal basic income for two years. And I suppose there's no strings attached, just straight cash money. Here you go. Take that money. We don't care how you spend it. You can spend it on drugs, weave, alcohol. You can spend it on clothing. You can spend it on something good. Whatever you want to do, this is your money. Now, these programs, I think they're designed to help, but they don't. I mean, how many programs do we have right now? You have EBT, WIT, TANF, Section 8, all these things, food stamps. But what have they actually done? All that they've really done, in my opinion, is anchored many of us in poverty for generations. They don't actually help most people, the majority, 99% or thereabouts, get out of poverty. All they do is make poverty comfortable. You may live in an abandoned home. You may have roaches and rats and everything flying around, but it's fine because you still are able to eat. You're still able to have some good clothes and stuff on your back. That's what the welfare state has done, in my humble opinion. And I think this UBI program will be more of the same. Now, before I really dive into it, let's uh, read this article. It's a short article right here on Yahoo News, originally from Huffington Post. And I want to stop it at certain points to address issues they may make. And of course, this article will be linked in the description box below the video. And the article reads... A new guarantee income pilot will give hundreds of dollars per month to poor black women in Georgia in an effort to improve their financial stability and mental health and tackle the racial wealth gap. Now, let's let's pause right there. This whole thing about the racial wealth gap. Is that really a real thing? I mean, they may talk about the how much white families make versus black families, but how much of that white family income includes like the top 0.1 percent, your Bill Gates, Elon Musk and whatnot? They're going to most certainly skew the numbers. If you look at the median household income, well, median income for, I think, a single person in America is like 35000 That's regardless of race, uh, your gender, whatever you identify as, 35000 That's your median. So that's like right in the middle. So when you're talking about the racial wealth gap, is that really a real thing? Not necessarily. There's an effort gap, maybe, but that's a different story. We'll talk about maybe a little bit later. The program called In Her Hands will give about $850 per month in monthly cash, no strings attached, up to 650 black women for two years. Launching early next year and distributing more than $13 million, it is poised to be one of the largest guaranteed income pilot programs in the U.S. of A. Is it going to be effective? I doubt it. Led by the Georgia Resilience and Opportunity Fund, a coalition of local elected officials and nonprofits, and the nonprofit Give Directly, the program will include participants who live in Atlanta and other parts of suburban and rural Georgia who are near or below the federal poverty line. So you already know what it is. A lot of people in Atlanta, and when, when they say, you know, suburban and rural Georgia, they're probably talking about the Atlanta metro area because ATL itself is not really that big. It's actually kind of small physically. But the metro area is much bigger as far as uh, size, sprawl, and population than Atlanta. So they're probably talking about ATL Metro. That's really what this is about. They're like talking about black women specifically. Is it racist? I, I was I would assume so. No, no black men involved. I'll talk about that part a little bit later. Nobody white, nobody else living in poverty in Georgia. There's plenty of poor whites and everybody else in the state of Georgia. But we got to focus on the, the black queen, right? The program will study how much unconditional cash transfers affect the financial and mental well-being of participants. I mean, don't we have that data already? Have we not dealt with the welfare state since what, the 60s and 70s? Do we not understand what's going on? All that it does, as I said from the beginning, is anchor us in poverty. It does not give us a ladder out of poverty. It makes us comfortable being poor. It makes us comfortable not being ambitious, not being goal-driven, not really trying to see things through to the end. What's the point? We got money. We got free money all the time. Why do anything else? It's what's happening right now with all this free money floating around from the stimmies. Why go to work? There's help wanted signs everywhere, but why must I work when I'm able to stay home and get paid more 
from not working. Oh, the, the jobs are low income. The jobs are minimum wage, ABL. Well, I'm seeing signs for 13 an hour, 14 an hour, 15 an hour at Burger King, Waffle House, all that stuff. People don't want to work because they make more from being at home and they got comfy being at home. So it's fine. That's kind of what's going on right now. And it'd be the same exact thing with this. But was there, is there anything in here about you know, nobody trying to go to work? Is there any kind of uh, work incentive here? I'm not really sure, but I'll move on. It is intentionally being started in Atlanta, a city with some of the most pronounced income inequality in the United States, and specifically in its old Fourth Ward neighborhood where Martin Luther King Jr. grew up and promoted the idea of guaranteed income. The median black family in the U.S. owns $3,600 in wealth, about 2% of the $147,000 that the median white family owns per 2019 research from the Institute uh, for Policy Studies. And in Georgia, about 26% of black women live in poverty compared to 14% of white women. Now, let's, let's pause right here. Again, you're comparing the average black family to the average white family, but you're including some of the top 0.1%. There's more top 0.1%ers and whites than there are in blacks compare apples to apples compare regular working people together don't don't include the the super super rich in your equation it excuse it in an unfair way again the median income in the united states regardless of what your race or gender or whatever it is is like thirty five thousand. let's talk about that rather than these you know um these these ginned up numbers Black women who have also been hit disproportionately hard by the virus. Oh, here we go with the virus. Um, and the accompanying economic crisis being more likely than other groups to face job loss and eviction. Black people overall in the United States have experienced higher rates of hospitalization and death from the virus, blah, blah, blah. I mean, silly stuff. Black women are among the most likely groups to experience cash shortfalls that make covering basic needs difficult. This isn't the result of poor choices. Yes, it is. Not all, not all, not all the time, but often it is. I saw this YouTube channel, and shout out to the YouTuber. I forget the person's name, but they have um, investment properties. They are a landlord, and it's a black woman that's a landlord, and she was talking about how she had to evict her black female tenant. Now, the, the eviction was purely the tenant's fault. Check this out. They had plenty of adults living in this kind of like townhouse type spot. Adults with babies and everything else. You got nice cars sitting out front. You're employed. They went inside the home that was abandoned by the tenant with all kind of stuff inside. They, and it, it destroyed the house too. They had water running. It was a mess. But in the home, aside from all the trash that was left and the destruction of the water, Michael Kors bags, Gucci belts, all types of stuff. A lot of what's happening in the community, in the, in the black community, is poor choices. Not all. Just like you have poor blacks, poor whites, and that's just where they are right now. A lot of it is just poor choices, especially here in America where there's money floating around everywhere. But I digress. This isn't the result of poor choices, they say. It's the result of pervasive economic insecurity that has the sharpest impacts on women and communities of color. Hope Wallensack, executive director of the Grow Fund, said in a release. Oh, yeah, of course she'll say it because it made money that way, right? You, you got this fund that you give out money. How much do you skim from the top? That's a question, but I'll move on. Guaranteed income, this is a quote, guaranteed income is a step toward creating a more just and equitable economy. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. Okay, that's her right there. That's Hope Wollensack. Um, is she white, black? I can't really tell. But that's not necessarily that important. There's more to this article, but I'll let you guys read that. I think we pretty much got the gist of it. Um, Wow, okay. So we're going to give black women a bunch of money. How was that help, though? I mean, black women, when you're talking about black women in poverty, not all black women, but those who are in poverty already get a bunch of programs. There's already so many programs. It's not helped. It's made things worse. I mean, somebody may say that the welfare state has lifted a lot of black folks out of poverty, but has it really? 
maybe on paper, but not necessarily because you are just being sustained by the government. You're being subsidized by the government. Is that a way to live? And then they want to bring on this thing here. All you're going to do is create more dependency. That's all. And when the money runs out, it's going to be a problem. They, they've done this before. I think they did it in Mississippi and I think they did it in California. In Mississippi, they were giving out a thousand bucks. I don't know if it was in a month or two weeks or whatever it was. But as soon as the money was spent, the people came back to the people that gave him the money like, hey, but I need some more. I got more bills. I got more stuff going on. It's just like the episode of Family Guy when they won a the lottery. Remember that? Um, they, they won a lottery and they MC hammered all the money. They spent the money crazy. And at the end of the episode, they wound up broke. And then before the episode ends, officially, they won a the lottery again and end up broke than the first time they won the lottery. And the cycle continued for like three or four more times. They kept winning the lottery and they kept going broke. Why? It's because of the mentality that they have. The problem is not necessarily the money. Not in America. If you're living in third world Africa, Asia somewhere, that's much different. But in America, the problem is often not necessarily the money, it's the mentality. Because there's money to make here. You could do things to be able to get money that are legal, but do you want to do it? Do you feel comfortable enough in your current situation to say, I'm fine right here. I don't need to do more. And when I get more money, I'm going to just spend it on things I want. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm going to buy what this, uh, I'm going to buy what Nicki Minaj had on. I'm going to buy that. Yeah, I live in the projects. Yeah, I can't afford it. But so what? I want it. I got the money. I'm going to buy it. That's the mentality. And until you get rid of that mentality, the UBI will do no good. All it's going to do is get spent up on useless nonsense. And their lives will not change at all. All they're going to have is more junk in a trunk of their car or on the ground in their house. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How you feel about this universal basic income program given out to black women specifically? Uh, is it racist? Is it a good thing, bad thing? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I stand. I think it's a bad thing. It's not going to help. Maybe this fund will get more attention. Maybe they'll be able to get more money. Maybe uh, this lady, Wellness Hack, could be able to get um, a raise in her income for working at the fund. I'm not really sure. Ultimately, it's not going to work. And I think it'll kind of further divide black men and black women because it's for black women specifically, but the black men are left out. It, it'll just create more strife for no reason at all. No reason. It will not help the black women or the black community. It'll just be cash that they get spent. You're talking about iPhones, shoes, purses. Now, some may do the right thing, but see, if you're in poverty and you've been in poverty for a long time, the reason is because you probably have the wrong mentality, especially in Atlanta, Georgia. There's plenty of jobs everywhere, a lot of opportunity, but are you prepared to seize the opportunity? Are you prepared to go out there and get it? Do you want to go out there and get it? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.